I now want to show you a couple of very important reactions that are all different ways of oxidizing alcohols. Generically speaking, you can imagine starting with an alcohol like this and treating it with some type of reagent that will increase this carbon's number of bonds to oxygen by one, giving me this type of intermediate. This type of intermediate is an aldehyde, whereas the starting material is an alcohol. Is this an oxidation or reduction? Well, as you can see going from left to right, my substance is gaining a bond to oxygen. Thus, I can see that it is an oxidation. That is often abbreviated by writing the letter O in brackets over the arrow. Now, can this be oxidized further? You bet it can. If I replace this hydrogen with an OH, for example, my carbon has gone from having two total bonds to oxygen to having three total bonds to oxygen. Three is more than two. So is this also oxidation? Absolutely, because my carbon has gained bonds to oxygen. Now by comparison, what if I started with a carbon that looked like this? This is a secondary alcohol as opposed to a primary alcohol. Now I hasten to point out the difference here. In order to determine if an alcohol is a primary or a secondary alcohol, all I have to do is look at the carbon to which the OH is bonded. If that carbon is stuck to one carbon, then it's a primary alcohol. If it's stuck to two carbons, then it's a secondary alcohol. If it's stuck to three carbons, then it's a tertiary alcohol. And if it's stuck to zero carbons, then it's just a methyl alcohol. So over here, if I have a secondary alcohol, you can imagine this carbon gaining a bond to oxygen to form this type of product right here. Has this substance been oxidized or reduced? Well, you'll notice it's gained a bond to oxygen. Thus, it has been oxidized, and this is an oxidation process. This type of product is called a ketone. Ketones cannot be oxidized any further by traditional means. The reason is because in order to have an oxidation proceed, I have to be able to replace bonds to hydrogen with bonds to oxygen. Because this carbon is not bonded to any more hydrogens at this stage, both of these R groups represent carbons, I cannot oxidize this up any further. Now in that vein, we can see that if I have a tertiary alcohol, that is an alcohol in which the carbon is bonded to three separate carbon groups, and I subject it to oxidation conditions, I will get no reaction. The reason is because there are no hydrogens bonded to this central carbon to replace with bonds to oxygen. Does that make sense? In order to do an oxidation by conventional means, I have to replace a bond to hydrogen with a bond to oxygen. Here are some typical reagents that we use to do oxidations. One of them is called PCC, which just so you know, stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. You don't have to remember that name. There's another reagent called pyridinane. They are two reagents that can convert primary alcohols into aldehydes, as shown here. Here's an example primary alcohol. I've got an OH that's stuck to a carbon that's only bonded to one carbon. That is indeed a primary alcohol. If I treat that with either PCC or pyridinane, and this molecule right here, dichloromethane, is just a solvent, so we don't have to worry that much about it, it will move the total number of bonds that this carbon has to oxygen up by one. In the starting material, the carbon only has one bond to oxygen. In the product, it has two. This type of molecule is called an aldehyde. Now separately, if I treat a secondary alcohol with PCC or pyridinane, it will also do the same thing. It will increase the number of bonds that my carbon has to oxygen by one. Let's take a look at an example. You'll see here I've got a carbon that's stuck to my OH and happens to be stuck to two carbons, one up top and one down here. That is a secondary alcohol. If I treat it with PCC or pyridinane, they increase the total number of bonds that this carbon has to oxygen by one, which moves it up to this product, which is indeed a ketone. The difference between a ketone and an aldehyde, of course, is that a ketone has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen that is flanked by two carbons. Whereas an aldehyde is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen that's flanked by one carbon and one hydrogen. Now by comparison, if you treat a primary alcohol with these reagents, dihydrogen chromate, H2CrO4, or sodium dichromate, Na2Cr207, and sulfuric acid, or just chromate itself, CrO3, 
and sulfuric acid, it will oxidize up my alcohol by as many bonds as the carbon has bonds to hydrogen. Let me show you this. Here I have a primary alcohol. This carbon, which has one bond to oxygen, also has two separate bonds to hydrogen. It's got one bond to one of these H's and another bond to another H. If I treat it with one of these strong oxidizing agents that are stronger than PCC or pyridinate, it will strip these hydrogens and replace them with bonds to oxygen. Because I have two total bonds to hydrogen, this carbon, I end up with two new bonds to oxygen. Thus, you can see that my total number of bonds that this carbon has to oxygen goes from being one in the starting material to being three total carbon oxygen bonds in the product. These types of oxidation reagents are very, very reactive and are much stronger than pyridinane or PCC. Now, by comparison, if I treat a secondary alcohol with any of these oxidizing reagents, it will also just convert it to a ketone. We go back to our same example from before. You'll notice that this carbon stuck to my OH is also bonded to two carbons, one up here and one down here. That is a secondary alcohol. If you draw it out, you'll notice that this carbon is only bonded to one hydrogen. Because it's only bonded to one hydrogen, when I react this with any type of oxidizing reagent, either PCC, pyridinane, or any of these strong oxidizing agents, it can only increase the number of bonds to oxygen by one, moving from a secondary alcohol to a ketone. So let's take a look at some examples. I want you to draw the products of each of the following reactions. Our first one is this. I've got an alcohol being treated with any of these strong oxidizing agents that I showed you in the previous slide. You'll note that this is a primary alcohol. That is, this carbon right here is bonded to two hydrogens. Because it's bonded to two hydrogens and I'm reacting it with a strong oxidizing reagent, it is going to increase the total number of bonds that this carbon has to oxygen by two. Thus, I end up with this type of product, which is called a carboxylic acid. Please note the difference between a carboxylic acid, an aldehyde, and a ketone. A carboxylic acid has a carbon double bonded to an O that is flanked on one side by an OH and on the other side by a carbon chain of some sort. An aldehyde has a carbon double bonded to an O that's flanked on one side by a hydrogen and on the other side by a carbon chain of some sort. And a ketone has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen that's flanked on both sides by carbons. Let's take a look at this second example. I've got the exact same primary alcohol being treated with PCC or pyridinane. Remember that these are milder oxidizing agents, and they will only increase the number of bonds that my carbon here has to oxygen by one. Thus, it goes from being a primary alcohol to being this type of product, which is indeed an aldehyde. All right, that seems like a great place for us to end this video. Hope it's been fun for you. Please stay tuned for our next one, in which I'll show you some more wonderful and magical reactions from chapter 10. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.